Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 28th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got two very recent vulnerabilities in Cisco RV320 and RV325 small business routers that are currently widely being exploited. A patch for these vulnerabilities was released just last week. The first vulnerability, CVE 2019-1652, is a command injection vulnerability in the router's web admin interface. The vulnerability is only exploitable for an authenticated user, so this is why Cisco only rated it as important. But first of all, the exploits that are going around now are going for default credentials, Cisco slash Cisco, of course. And then there is a second vulnerability, CVE 2019-1653, so just the next CVE number, so also released last week. And it's also rated high and also affects the web app admin interface. Now, the thing about this vulnerability is that it allows the attacker to retrieve arbitrary URLs without authentication, including the router's configuration file. Now, using this configuration file, an attacker then can obtain hash password. The Etsy shadow file can be downloaded and then, of course, they can brute force the password offline. Again, if you have a weak password, you're sort of a sitting duck there. Yes, and of course, the Cisco slash Cisco password or account will immediately be cracked. So definitely make sure that you expedite patching of these devices if you have an affected device. And remember, the patch was released last week. So if you didn't patch these routers within the last week, you may be vulnerable. In addition, definitely make sure that you use a strong password that mitigates at least these sort of widespread account exploits. And then also don't allow remote access to these web-based administrative interfaces. Internal access, at least, or maybe even limited to a couple of management consoles. And Google announced that it will add support for signed HTTP exchanges in future versions of Google Chrome. This is a brand new standard. The internet draft was just released last week. And it's sort of an interesting feature that may solve some of the issues sites have with HTTPS and also with distributing with content delivery networks and the like. In HTTPS, uh, encryption and content integrity is really linked. Uh, whenever you establish an HTTPS connection, you do your authentication of the server via the certificates. And then of course, the connection is also encrypted. So without in encryption, you basically don't have integrity in HTTPS. So as a result, in the past, sometimes sites sort of used mixed content uh, where you had uh, some images that were not confidential, served via HTTP and then the rest of the site via HTTPS. That didn't work because we didn't have integrity protection in HTTP. And that's why we need HTTPS and uh, do then all the overhead with encryption for the entire site, not just the confidential parts. Signed HTTP exchanges try to sort of find a little bit of middle ground here where the data that you're transmitting is digitally signed so it can't be altered and as a result you can still serve it in the clear it's also easier to cache uh, these particular requests and responses than in con deliver networks because now you can distribute it and actually you can verify that the content is authentic even if it's delivered from a site that's not necessarily part of the same domain or even a host name as the original site that includes this content. So it's really supposed to help mitigate some of the problems that we have with con delivery networks without sort of having to do the entire encryption overhead and without really needing that end-to-end -end connection that HTTPS provides. So this content can be cached at various points along the way and the integrity can still be guaranteed. Now, there's another somewhat similar standard and that's sub-resource integrity. Now, we'll have to see how all of this plays out and uh, you know, once uh, Google Chrome, of course, delivers at least the beta version or so uh, to play with so you can see how this 
this uh, new feature really sort of uh, fits into your overall architecture. These signed HTTP exchanges are also supposed to help, for example, uh, with uh, HTTP2 push, where you sort of preload uh, data into the client. And again, it will sign the entire exchange, not just, for example, the body. So you can also sign headers. Uh, and uh, that's really something that, for example, sub resource integrity uh, doesn't really do for you. Now, since I just mentioned uh, experimenting with new features, uh, no problem doing that in your own lab with your browser, your web server, but uh, be a little bit careful when you perform an experiment that involves sending packets out on the internet. Researchers uh, in January twice conducted an experiment with BGP, and uh, what they did here is that they set some options that were reserved for development, at least that's what the option type F was marked as and routers should have ignored that uh, but didn't. In particular FRR routers, uh, that sort of particular software that's used on some Linux routers, reset its connection whenever it saw these packets and that caused some routing problems. Now the FFR router developers are aware of the issues and hopefully they'll release a fix uh, for it soon. Part of the problem was that they were kind of using uh, this option sort of in a non-standard way. And well, if you like packets, uh, I posted another packet challenge on Friday. URL uh, is again in the show notes and the same URL that I had for the packet challenge, I will add the solution uh, maybe later tonight or early on Monday morning. And if you're interested in packets, I'm of course always teaching SEC 503, the intrusion detection in depth class. Next one will be in Madrid, the end of March. And well, this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.